can start recording just in case this is helpful as well. Um, all right, so some of you may have caught this bug uh, yesterday, but uh, when we were going over the delete uh, functionality in, uh, in the model, uh, we forgot to parse this ID. Uh, so if you want to, you can throw that parse in on there and then your code will be complete. It did say, I believe it did say parse in, in the lesson. I think Jim just forgot while uh, actually coding it. So anyway, that's uh, express to do's now. <clears throat> Um, let me show you something here. All right, so this is Amazon, and I just, I didn't even know this existed, but there's an Echo Dot that's rainbow, which I, makes me want to order an Echo Dot now. Um, I didn't even know that existed until literally like five minutes ago. Um, but <clears throat> what I want to draw your attention to is uh, this URL up here, right? And I'm going to, uh, in order to better see it, I'm going to copy it and just paste it into a blank um, document here, a blank file. All right, everything looks pretty normal, you know, in, in, the, uh, in the first part of this URL. Uh, we've got, of course, the domain, we've got the rest of the URL here, but then when we get to this question mark, um, that is when the query parameters start. Now, <clears throat> What, what the question mark denotes is that now, we, uh, it's basically like a whole bunch of filters. Um, so for instance, in Amazon, you know how on the left side sometimes, let me go back to, let me just go to a, uh, uh, where do I wanna go? I'll just go to electronics. Something like that. Okay, so over here on the left side, you know how you can add filters like this. Uh, it's the, kind of the same idea when it comes to uh, when it comes to these query query parameters. So the way that we read that is let me separate those out from the rest of the URL. And if I see an ampersand, that denotes the next section of the query parameter. So the way that we read this is saying that, um, hey, we want to view the, pro uh, the product where PFRDR, whatever that stands for, equals this value, and where PFRDP equals this value, and where TH, whatever that stands for, equals one. Right, so that's, that's how a query parameter works. It's a string of filters, essentially, a string of key value pairs, and we're used to key value pairs now. Um, but that is the way that it is structured. It always comes after the question mark. The question mark says, hey, I'm about to list a whole bunch of key value pairs. And if you have multiples, you separate them with an ampersand. All right. So now when you're out there navigating the web and you see that, you'll better understand just exactly the way that that is structured and what it might be communicating. So let's mess around with that. Um, I'm not going to say that. <clears throat> so in uh, in Express shows, uh, we will do this. Let's go to routes and then shows here. Actually, sorry, no. Let's go to index.js here. All right. Now what we're going to do is create a new route here, and we're just going to do the route and the controller all together. Um, because this, again, is just an experiment. So we're gonna do route.get, and let's say greeting. And then we're going to give it two URL parameters. So first, last. And let's go ahead and fill in our rec res next. Inside here for right now, we're just going to send back the string hello. Actually, I'm going to put it in back ticks to prepare for the next step that we're going to do. But right above that, I want to console log out our rec params.
I'm going to paste this in the thread off of that sync message there. All right, need to make sure that I spin up my server as well. I forgot to include that in the uh, in the sync notes there, but make sure that your server is running. And then I'm going to uh, put this side by side here. So if I do greeting and let's see, I'll go with Vanessa today. All right. Now, notice down here what my rec params look like, looks like, right? Where does it get the keys from? As we are learning, uh, it is getting it from what we name these uh, parameters here. Just like the way, just like the parameters that we pass into a function, we name the parameters that we pass into a URL, essentially, right? And so it takes whatever exists at this spot, <coughs> sorry, it takes whatever exists, um, whatever value is at that spot, which at that second spot there is Vanessa, and then at the end there is Larson. So it takes those two pieces and then creates an object for us that we, of course, can, uh, can access. We have been using um, ID because it makes sense as describing what we are typically passing in that spot. But now, oh, Chris, you got a crash on your code? Same here. It's looking for method override, and I just don't remember how to install that at the moment. Oh. Crap, got it so too. sorry. Yep, I forgot. Um, I meant to include that in the instructions. Uh, stop your server and run npm i. Sorry about that, everybody. Yep, module not found. So it's it's looking for method off override and it did not find it. Yeah, run npm i. I'm gonna update my instructions here. All right. <clears throat> Once uh, method override is installed, and it should install because I included it in the package JSON that you should have just fetched and reset to. Um, so that should have installed. And then after that, go ahead and run your server again. And you should be up and running. All right. Anybody still uh, waiting for method override to uh, to uh, install? All right. <clears throat> so, as I was saying, that um, when we console log out rec params, that is the object, and and we have been using ID up to this point. But you can name this whatever you want, you know, and I know that Jim uh, showed like, I think he used Turkey or something like that. I think that's, um, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's the parameter that he used. But how can we take these parameters because you might want to pass multiple parameters in your project. Um, so now let's take those parameters that we know about and inject them into or interpolate them into this string here into our template literal. So we can say rec params first, space, rec params last. So again, the only thing that I just now did was update the string inside the res.send. So that now if I, uh, if I uh, refresh my browser, 
now we see hello and then the first and last name that you passed as URL parameters. All right. Now let's contrast this with uh, reg.query. All right. <clears throat> so let's create another route down here. And let's just say greet just by itself. And we stub up the rest here. And this time we are going to console log rec.query. I'll update uh, the route in that thread with what we've got here. And then throw this first version also in the thread. All right. <clears throat> so now in our browser, we can of course go with greet and we, I mean, we get what we expect. Our, our rec.query is empty. Um, because I didn't pass anything to it. But now, and I'm gonna stretch this out just a little bit so we can see this. Um, we can, by the way, we haven't predetermined any sort of query parameters, uh, any of those keys. So we can actually just make it up as we go. Although when you're actually doing this, you would expect specific keys, just like in Amazon, they were expecting TH for something, right? Um, so typically, you are, your query params are going to be predetermined to some extent. Although, I mean, I could, if I wanted to, um, I don't know if I've still got, yeah, I've still got the Amazon. If I wanted to, I could try, you know, adding extra parameters like, you know, uh, last name. And I mean, it wouldn't do anything with it. It would just ignore it because it doesn't have, it doesn't have any functionality on the back end set up to handle a key called last name. So you can add whatever you want, but that's not going to necessarily going to make a difference. All right. <clears throat> but, create an object key in the HTTP. Say that again. Can you create an object key? Create a key in that object that we, the request object. Oh, down here, the one that's empty right now. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly what we're about to do. So. Let's go. Uh, let's go. First name. Make sure that you include the question mark. So first name equals, and then um, whoever, whatever you'd like to put in there. Ampersand last name. Right. <clears throat> so pay close attention to the syntax. Question mark. And then uh, first name, I just camel cased it. You could do it as uh, lower snake case, which is separated by the uh, um, by the uh, the underscore. Uh, and then equals, and then whatever uh, value you like to give it, and then use the ampersand to separate the next one, which is last name, and then give it that value as well. All right, and then when I hit enter here, now let's take a look at that rec.query object that Express built for us. Isn't that great? Absolutely love this stuff. So um, whether you want to pass data, we, we've seen, so now we have seen at least three ways to pass data, right? Rec.params, rec.query, and rec.body, which is what comes from a form. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, now we can use any data that we pass from uh, uh, through queries 
to do whatever we'd like with, uh, with that data. So I'm going to go again, first name. Whoops, I forgot to include the query part. So then now if I refresh that again, we get to see the actual values that we passed through query parameters. So again, URL parameters are going to be part of the base URL. Query parameters are going to be uh, parameters that are tacked on. Because you can see, like in our URL pattern here on line 14, we don't do a question mark. We don't do anything. But Express ca uh, captures those query parameters for us and uh, automatically injects it into the, uh, into the request object that's coming in. So I think that's pretty neat. Um, all these different ways of passing data from the client to the server um, is, is pretty great. Oh, you know what I could even do, let's see. Well, I guess, I don't know if I'd wanna do uppercase because then it would be yelling the first name, but anyway, that's kind of fun anyway. So there we go. <clears throat> all right. Any questions on uh, query parameters or URL parameters? Um, again, hopefully you're getting more used to the idea of URL parameters as we use those, um, because that's the main one that we're going to be using. Query parameters actually is, is a way that we would often build when we were using Ajax in the front end JavaScript, and I'm hoping to find a chance to show you how to do that as well. Uh, because right now, you can use your front end JavaScript to send uh, HTTP requests, of course. Right now, we are relying exclusively on our HTML to send those requests, right? Because that's what, because we want to focus more on, on uh, how to consume those requests rather than writing some extra front end JavaScript. But if you find your, yourself in a spot where you want to make it so where uh, a request can be initiated without, um, without typing a URL in, without clicking on a link or without submitting a form, then uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to show you uh, how you might do that. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to, um, you know what, I'll just comment those out for right now. You can choose to keep those in there or get rid of them. They're not obviously part of an Express Shows app. That was just for the sake of, uh, of demonstrating what those look like. Okay. All right, next topic is going to be partials. Um, oh, I'm sorry, actually one more thing is, um, like I said, I filled out the rest of the, uh, the routes and, uh, and controllers, uh, as well as the models. Let me just give you a quick tour of what that looks like. Nothing super different between Express Shows and Express To Do's in terms of the routes. I mean, it looks virtually the same, just a different controller, but all of these uh, function names are the exact same. So nothing new there. <clears throat> as far as the controllers go, um, again, Nothing super different in here. Um, our, let's see, our edit is just uh, passing in the ID and the body and redirecting to the individual, uh, uh, back to the individual show that we updated. Um, edit, nothing super different there. Delete, pretty similar to the to-dos, create new show and index. Okay, so that's pretty, pretty much uh, the same as the to-dos, but in the model, um, a couple things that are slightly different um, is that, let's see, in the create show. So our data, <clears throat> if you remember, is an ID, a name, and a cast array. Now we haven't worked with arrays as part of our, of our um, uh, data are, as part of our objects yet. So um, how would we handle that? Because in our form, and I'll just show you the form real quick. Uh, what I did was I just created uh, an input for each cast member. Um, and just I'm just basically limiting it to three. But notice the name here. 
if you were wondering if you could, if all, if the name had to be different for all inputs, it does not. But if you have multiple inputs that have the same name, it, uh, the form actually creates an array for you, which I think is absolutely fantastic. So here, let me show you what I mean. If I go into the controllers again and go to create, Oh, by the way, VS Code has this snippet to where if you type log, I think it'll create console.log for you. And then I can't remember if I created this or if, uh, if VS Code did, but if you, if you look in your VS Code snippets and turn this on or even try this, it may do it. It may already be set up to do it for you, but then it creates two cursors for you so that now I can say uh, rec.body, which is pretty fancy. All right, <clears throat> so what does that look like? Let me go to the right spot here. And, um, oh man, I forgot to ask if there were any questions this morning on important things uh, such as Express or the series finale of Breaking Bad. Man, missed opportunity there. All right, we can deal with that later if we want to. Okay. Uh, Let's see, I'm trying to think, uh, you know what, I'll go with Arrested Development. Um, and I can't remember how to spell her last name. I'll just go with that for right now. Is that right? No, Damon. And we'll our net. All right. So now if I save this show, watch what happens down here in my terminal. It created uh, the name, of course, and then, excuse me, <coughs> the cast. It automatically grabbed all of those, um, grabbed all of those values and collected them into an array for me, which I think is absolutely fantastic. But one thing that I need to account for, though, is what if I create? Um, let's see, what's another great show? Oh man, now I don't remember. Tiger King. Past... <laughs> Tiger King. I actually have never watched it. It, it, it just doesn't appeal to me. But um, okay. So uh, cast members, any names there? Give, 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 me, give me just um, uh, one Joe or two. Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic, yep. Okay. All right, so let me... Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So I want to intentionally leave this last, uh, this last input blank and take a look at what happens down here. <clears throat> now, there we go. We've got a blank in here. That's not what I want. Um, if someone chooses to leave that empty, then, here, I'll show you what I did here. So, taking the rec.body, I pass it to create new show. Create new show is located in the models. Uh, so let me grab this and just put it side by side so we can see this. That is not what I was looking for. I, I realized later that, uh, <laughs> that calling this show when we had a show EJS and stuff was not maybe the best choice, but uh, okay. <clears throat> so take a look in here. As the rec.body comes in, I add an ID to it, just like we were doing yesterday, you know, creating an ID based on the date. So that's fine. But then I'm going to redefine the cast. I mean, the cast is already here, right? But I'm going to redefine the cast with using a helper function. So take a look down here. Um, so not every function in here has to be something that is called from a controller. Some of them can just be helper functions, just like we have gotten used to in unit one that have a very specific purpose. And the specific purpose of this function is simply to remove any elements that are empty strings. So filter out any elements that are empty strings. So I'm, over, I'm overriding cast, basically redefining cast, uh, over, uh, re, yeah, redefining it as whatever filter empty strings returns when I pass it new object or basically rec.body.cast, rec.body.cast. So I'm passing just that array to it, filtering out the empty string, 
and then resetting cast so that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't include any empty strings any longer. Then when I've done that, I go ahead and push it into my shows array. All right. Now what that does is back over here is that when I click on Tiger King, and you'll notice I, I took away the cast from the, from the main page here uh, and only put the cast in uh, the detail page, in the show page, but now I don't have an extra bullet with an empty spot there. All right, and because what if I remove Carol Baskin and update show? Oh man, I was so proud of that. And did I just, I forgot to do that, didn't I? I sure did. Awesome. Well, thank goodness I'm recording. Um, okay. Wait a second, what do I wanna do here? What do I wanna do? So found show cast equals because here's a show object that I'm passing in with the empty strings. So I want to pass the cast from that and then redefine found show so that then I no, I don't want that here though. Oh, this one should be show object. Okay, so I find the existing show, then I overwrite the rect up body that I'm passing in, and then it can combine things. I don't know if that's gonna work though. I think that might still have a bug in it. Let me try this again. Let me try not that. Man, well, you're welcome. I introduced just deleted that uh, that data point when you oh. updated it. Yep, that's exactly right. Thank you, Travis. Great catch. Uh, so yeah, uh, Travis pointed out that when I made an update to my server, it restarted the server, and because my data is not persisting yet, uh, Tiger King is no longer part of my database. So let's go back here, add it again, and you'll notice I didn't turn off autocomplete on any of these, which is uh, fine. So I'll go in here, edit show. Oh, did it work? Yes. Oh, man, I'm so competent. All right. All right. So, <clears throat> um, we we always want to accommodate or or uh, uh, if there are any situations like that, we obviously just want to, um, uh, to handle those. And sometimes in order to do it more elegantly, because you'll notice that in update and create, in both of those spots, it makes sense to filter out any empty strings. So it makes sense to create a fil uh, instead of uh, instead of writing the exact same functionality twice, which makes it a little bit more difficult to maintain, you create a helper function that uh, can be used with any of your any of your functions. All right. <clears throat> Next piece. Now we're going to get into partials. Uh, partials are very handy because um, if we take a look at all of these, I'm going to close everything that's not EJS right now. we take a look at all of our uh, all of our views we have a dryness issue right um, where if we take a look at our head we see a whole lot of similarity there um, and I won't I wonder if it'll I'll look at that nice okay so yeah we've got we've just got a lot of repetition and again, if we decide to add something to the head and, and we want it to apply to all of our views, then we're going to spend more time than we'd like to doing that. So how can we dry that up? <clears throat> Let's take a look at the partials. Let's see, EJS partials. Uh, 
going to pull up the, uh, the documentation so that we can practice uh, getting into the documentation. I'm sorry, not the documentation, but just like an article. I apologize, I should have had this open beforehand. All right, so I didn't find what I was looking for, but that's all right. Okay, what we're going to do is over here in views, right? <clears throat> uh, let's right click on views, create a new folder. Call it partials. And then inside partials, let's create two new EJS files. Oops. Header EJS. And footer EJS. Um, let's do footer first because that will be the easier one to take care of. Sorry, I am not finding the documentation that I was looking for. Okay, so the footer is very simple for us uh, right now. The footer is just going to be body and HTML. So I'm going to copy that. <clears throat> just the closing body tag and the closing HTML tag. And that is everything for this partial. That's all that we want. All right, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to just try this with the new EJS uh, super quick. And when we are including partials, uh, we're not using the squid or the flounder. We actually get to use the stingray. And I have not uh, figured out a good way to, uh, um, to associate the stingray with, um, uh, with any sort of functionality that the partials are putting out there. But uh, anyway. <clears throat> it's injecting something. Oh, you stole it from me. <laughs> nice. Good job, Travis. Yeah, nicely done. Likewise. All right. Because I don't remember the, the partial syntax. Okay, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Good, 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 good. I thought I was on the right track, but just in case. Okay. Now I'm going to... Let's see, where are you? I'm gonna go back to my ad show and partials footer does not work. Why do you not work? Uh, what did I do wrong here? Partials footer. Uh oh, okay, good. Oh my good. Nice. So obviously, I'm doing something different. Yeah, go ahead, Chase. I think there needs to be a hyphen on the other side, too, on the closing tag. Let me give that a shot. What about slash partials? I am willing to try that for sure. Dot slash. Oh, 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 that's interesting. Um, dot dot slash partials. Oh, uh, who was that? Who was that? Me. Man, Kimberly, nicely done. <laughs> that was that was fantastic. I loved that. Um, that's exactly right. I don't know why it, I, that wasn't crossing my mind that uh, within views we still it's a file pass, so we still have to accommodate for the various ups and downs in there 
And so since we are inside shows, we go up one level into partials and down into footer. All hail K Lord. All right. <clears throat> okay, so now um, I'm going to take this and we can dry up our, uh, our other views here. So I'm gonna go into show EJS. Here, let me just go full screen for a second. And I don't know why it keeps wanting to do that. Uh, it's going to edit EJS, get rid of these guys. And then what was the last one? Oh, index, index EJS. So again, all I'm doing is going into my four shows EJS files and replacing them with, uh, with this line of, replacing the, the bottom two lines, basically the closing body tag and closing HTML tag with this line right here. Of course, we could do that in our main one, but we just have to remember that the file path is slightly different, right? because partials is at the same level as this index EJS. You don't need to worry about that one. It was, it was these other four that I mainly wanna, that I was mainly concerned about. All right, so again, new EJS. The bottom should look like this, show EJS. Uh, where are the other two? Edit, and then index EJS. All right, now for the big one. Let's take care of this header here. So I'm just going to copy, um, oh, by the way, so as far as the footer is concerned, um, one of the things that you can do now is if you wanted to um, uh, include like some sort of Java, you know, front end JavaScript on the front end, now you can just do that. And now it's in every single page, which is kind of cool. Um, so that's the advantage of, of course, having that footer in there. <clears throat> But now let's take care of the header. That's the big one. So you can just choose some random one. I'm going to choose new and just uh, going to copy. Actually, I'm going to cut out the head there and paste that into header EJS. Don't you want the body tag too? Um, that. Yeah, you know what, actually let's do that. And that actually comes in handy because if at some point you wanna add some, oops, some navigation right under there, you're already inside the body tag. So yeah, that, um, that's a great, that is a great question and suggestion. All right, for right now, I'm just doing, I'm, I just wanna test the, um, I just want to test the new page for right now. Let me go ahead and save that. <clears throat> All right, so here are the changes that I just made. I cut out the head tag plus the opening body tag and pasted them in header EJS. Then I pasted in, or I took the, well, I just took this line and pasted it up here, but changed footer to header. So those are the two changes that I just now made. Again, paste the head in header EJS, the partial, and then inject that partial in new EJS. All right, let's see if things are still working here. They are fantastic. That is excellent news. All right. <clears throat> so we can take this, and replace all of the other, make sure that you include that body tag to get rid of that in all of your other EJS files. So I'm updating show EJS now. My and if you're already, can I ask go a ahead. question? Yes, um, please. How, how do you account for like the title being different in the different, okay, you're about to go over that, weren't you? Yeah, no, it's, I was just about to say, and if you're anticipating the title being different, and then, so you obviously were, so well done on that. Uh, we will um, check out how to do that in just a minute. So now I'm going to update the edit. I love that you beat me to that though. 
because that means that you're observing that and already already seeing problems uh, that need to be solved. All right, so I went ahead and replaced all of that. But of course, um, as Lauren was just pointing out, now our title for every single page is add show. That is not obviously what we want. So <clears throat> how do we um, account for dynamic titles in each of these? Well, in our header EJS, I'm going to squid a variable called title. Doesn't mean anything yet. I haven't given it any sort of value. So that if I go over here and now if I refresh, I'm going to get all of that because it is looking for reference error. Let's see, title is not defined. There's my error right there. That's what we're expecting. So let's go back to, uh, now we need to go to our controllers here. Open up your shows controller. <clears throat> and let's do this only with the new form. Now you remember our new form right now, um, it was very, very simple. All we needed was just the EJS and that's all we needed. But now we need to make it slightly more complex and add a piece of data, render an actual piece of data together with it. And specifically the word title. or the, uh, the, the key title. So again, in the new show controller, I'm adding a data object to the render and giving it a title of just add show, the string add show. All right, now I'm not quite done yet though, because even though title is defined and being passed to it, it's only being passed to new EJS. It's not being passed all the way into this partial. So in new EJS, oh, wait a second, wait a second. Is that how you do it? Um, hold on, pass. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, sorry, I almost did the wrong thing. <clears throat> because this is, this is kind of the similar idea as render, where this needs to be an object. So you can say title, colon, title, or because they're the exact same, we can just say uh, Curly's title. Let me test this real quick. See if we are up and running. Oh, whoops, I'm not on the new page yet. All right, there we go. <clears throat> so now let's take this line from new EJS or whatever view that you're uh, experimenting with and just replace the exact same line in your other EJS files. So show. Edit and index. All right, even though we have done this piece, obviously we still need to update all of our renders. So go back to your controller and anywhere that you see render, add a title that makes sense. For the edit, I'm actually going to say edit, by the way, I'll share all this code. I'm sorry if I'm going back and forth. This is exactly what y'all were talking about yesterday and I, I hate doing that to you. I noticed that the time was getting close so that's why I sped up just a little bit. <clears throat> For the show, I want the title to be the, sh the name of the show. And then for the index, I'll just say title 
all shows. Okay. So again, let me scroll from the top. I'm, I'm in my controllers and I'm adding the title property to my data object anytime that I see render. For my edit, I included, uh, I wanted to say edit and then the name of the show, right? For, let me get rid of this console log. For my new show, which is the one that we just did, we went ahead and added just add show. For the show controller added, and I wanted to make the tab say the name of the show. And for index, I just said all shows. All right, I'm putting this in the thread where we had URLs and query params. So this is controllers slash shows JS. And you can copy and paste that in if you would like now. Will you I'm also gonna- At the end of this? Say it again? Will you be pushing your code at the end of this? Yes, I will, so that you can do another fetch and reset if you'd like. In fact, why don't I just go ahead and do that now? Uh, first, let me test, make sure that add show, oops. Let me make sure that it's actually working code so that I'm not pushing bad stuff here. The office should show up here, good. Edit the office should show up there, good, okay. Um, All right, so now you can do a fetch and reset if you'd like. <clears throat> Again, I apologize for speeding up there at the end. Again, I, I, I hate doing that. Uh, this is being recorded, so if you uh, want to go back and watch it, of course you can as well. But the effects of the changes that we just made <clears throat> again, are going to be able to dry up our code so that now, if you want, um, let's say that you have decided to uh, include a CSS framework or just a CSS, um, uh, you see uh, some, some front, end, uh, front, front end CSS, which there is no back end CSS. So let's say that you wanted to include some CSS in here. Um, let's see, where is our CSS? It's in the public here. So I can include a link to style sheets, style. And now I, I can include it in all of my uh, views by going to the partial header EJS. and including that link. A question about that. So since the body is split up into two partials, if you like style the body, that's not gonna affect it, right? Cause it's, do, do you understand my question? If I style this body? Yeah, so like since it's split up into between two partials, will it still style it properly? Cause the, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, no, actually, yes, it will. Because what is happening is uh so for example the index ejs like it is building a fully formed html file so that any styles that you have um that are uh, linked here in your header will apply to anything that is importing this header into it okay is that what you're asking yeah i guess yes yeah. so the bottom of the body is is definitely injected before the styles are run on the actual yes file that, yep, yeah, that's exactly right. All right, so just by including that one line of CSS here, now we've automatically improved all of our, all of our um, views here, right? So um, again, you can see the value of using partials uh, to dry up your code. Uh, any questions? 
on the partials there? So if you had different styles floating around, you could also inject those styles in a similar way we did to the titles. That's exactly right. Yeah. And then the other piece here, <clears throat> uh, you'll notice that all of our, our navigation, right? That is common to every single page. So what if I include that in here now? I mean, the, the, the possibilities are endless in terms of drying up that code. So now my navigation becomes a lot more manageable um, if I include it in a header. And I will push all this code in just a minute here. And uh, one more thing too. Um, clearly we could get pretty complicated with our directory style here since our views folder is basically like a file directory in the URL. Say if we were one tier further, like we had a folder inside of shows and we would need mm -hmm. partials, mm -hmm. would it be dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash? That's exactly right. Oops. That is exactly right. So yeah, you just need to go up two levels to get to, uh, to, get to that file. All right. Uh, got just a couple minutes here. Um, we will take care of uh, Mongo Mongoose. I'm going to uh, write up just kind of a description in our channel so that you can you can see that as a as a form of preview. Uh, but then, as far as Mongoose goes, we'll talk more about that uh, right before lunch. All right, everybody, enjoy your outcomes, and I will see you in the global room at 11:40.